All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about this toroidal core, and this is the one that we use on the Cartena Poseidon, which is a vertical antenna. And so it's wound in a four to one configuration. And in this configuration, depending upon how you connect it to your transmission line, it can either be an un, -un or a ballon. I've got a video called un, -un versus ballon, or maybe it's ballon versus un, un for four to one transformers, if you want to learn more about that. But uh, the reason I'm doing this video is, is that we had gotten a lot of questions around how to exactly wind this core. So we're going to do that in this video. A couple of things I want to point out first. This is a powdered iron core. It is a T130 Type 52. I don't want to get into all the specifics about that. I've got tons of videos about this core and why we chose it. Anyhow, what we do is we take two wires, and that's called a bifiler winding. And we do eight turns of this uh, wire onto this core, and we get eight wraps. Eight times two is 16. Just keep that in mind because it's actually 16 windings on the core. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But what you do when you put this thing together is, is you take your two wires in the center. So here's the center on the left-hand side and here's the center on the right-hand side. And you strip the magnetic coating or the enamel coating off the magnetic wire and solder these together. And once you do that, if you touch any two of these wires with a multimeter set for continuity testing, you'll get continuity across to all of them. And that's the way it should work. A lot of questions have been coming in around which one should have continuity and which ones shouldn't. You won't have continuity until you strip the coating off, twist, and solder. Okay, so that part's done. The other thing I wanted to mention is, is that on this side of the core, you see the wires going over the top. And on this side, they come out the bottom. It doesn't matter. If you start on this side and rewind that way, going through the core, it's going to be reversed. It doesn't matter at all. What's important is that you have eight windings and that your center wires are connected. So here's a picture. It's a schematic of what the core does electrically. And so on this side, we have our transmission line. And then you can see the center of the transmission line is your center conductor. And that comes out and it goes into the center tab. So we say, hey, what the heck is the center tab? So this right here where we have the two wires twisted together is our center tab. So when we wind this thing up and connect it to our frame, we want this to go to the center conductor of our BNC connector. And I just happen to have one sitting right here. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's our BNC connector on the frame. And the center is this pin right here. So you want to slide that piece of magnet wire in there and solder it into place. The ground is this tab right here, and that goes to the shield. And so if you notice, by looking at this schematic, we have another line that comes here and it connects to ground. So if we look at our toroid, that's this one. It's going to come down and it's going to go into that, uh, it's going to go into that tab. Let me pull a quick picture up real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So here you can see the core on the frame, and you can see the center tab is going to the center conductor and our BNC connector, and then on the lower right hand side you can see that wire comes down and goes through that tab and into our ground lug and our ground lug is where we connect our counterpoise okay so we're back and you can see so this line goes down here to ground that is our counterpoise connection right here and then this is where we connect to the shield ground then we have one other wire and that goes out to our element and that's this wire and this is what's going to connect to our 25 foot vertical element let me pull a picture up real quick. There we go. There's the picture. And you can see that wire on this core does a U-turn and goes around and connects to the orange wire on the top of the frame. All right, let's get the winding so you can see how this is done. So you can see I used white zip ties when I tied this one up. And these are white zip ties. And the reason they're white zip ties is because that's what I have. Now, you might get a different color zip tie in your kit. But here's our toroidal core right here. And each kit comes with two pieces of magnet wire, about 18 inches long. And then what we're going to do is, is that we're just going to marry the ends of these up. And if I take a look at this one, so I'm going to try to wind it the same way. What I notice is, is that on the left-hand side, these are coming out the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this around real quick, and I'm going to stick these through the bottom just like that. Right now, it doesn't matter if they cross. We want to make sure they're not crossed when we wind them, but right now we're just sizing. And then I'm going to use this scale on my desk right here, right? So each block's a half inch, so that's going to be two. It's about two and a half inches is what I got. Let me just give a little bit more. 
And I'm going to be slightly over two and a half inches because I am going to have to bend this wire around and connect it to the top. Let's go to, let's go to about three inches. And that should, that should be plenty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bend this around the outer part of my toroid. And that's going to kind of help hold it in place. And here's where I want to make sure that my wires are not crossing. And then I'm just going to take these two wires on this side, trying to keep them as straight as possible. And right now they're a little twisted. There we go. And I'm just going to carefully bend those around the toroid. And when I do this, I can use a piece of that zip tie to hold all this together. But I don't think I'm going to need to do that quite yet. And what I do is I take my thumb and I push the wire through the center. And then I slowly pull this wire through. Now with each turn, what I want to do is I want to take a look and make sure that nothing is crisscrossed and it's not. So I'm doing pretty well. And this is the point where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go put this thing on here just to hold everything in place and help me out because I've only got two hands. I think some of you have three hands and you're going to be okay, but for me, I only have two. And once that's in place and tight, I'm just going to snip that off so it's not in my way. And then here you can see I've got two wires coming out. And then when I take a look at my toroidal core, I want to make sure this is as snug as possible. I've already got two turns. One, two. A turn is every time the wire passes through the center of the core. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this eight times. Okay, for the sake of time, I just went ahead and wound this off camera. And so what you can see is I've got eight turns on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coming through. And what I can do real quick is I can put another zip tie on holding this last one in place. Some people don't do that. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion one way or another. I do because I feel that it helps me tidy everything up. And I like it tidy. And so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down and tighten it. Now, what you can see on, on my particular core here is, is that these wires are a little bit longer. And maybe because the way the element is going to be on the left-hand side of the frame, I might want to flip this over and just mount it that way. I don't have to do that. You can do that. It doesn't matter which way you face this, up or down. Both are the same. But what I want to do is I want to take both of these and I want to strip this coating off. And when I strip that coating off, I'm going to wrap it around. So let me go ahead and show you how I do that. Now you need to do a good job stripping this coating off. So a lot of people will use something like a razor blade or a knife or they'll use a tool like this and scrape, scrape, scrape. And being honest, that's how I used to do it too. But I'm super duper lazy and I sit there and I build a ton of these cores these days. So I use a Dremel tool and I just have a little bit of a grinding stone on there. I don't know what it's called, but it's on my Dremel. And I just fire this baby up and I can strip this whole thing in seconds. Now, as I do that, I got to get all sides of this because I want to make sure that it's stripped clean. But you can see the difference right there. So here's where we have the enamel coating. Here's where we don't. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to strip the rest of these because it's noisy and it makes a mess on my desk. I'll be right back. You can see. All right, we're back. And hopefully you can see that the stuff has been stripped off of all of this. And so if you're going to mess up, this is where it's going to be. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take these two end pieces and I'm going to get them way out of the way. And I'm going to make sure that I have my center one here and I have my center one here. And I'm going to kind of bend this one over a little bit and then bend it out, right? Just like that. So see how I got kind of like halfway up the toroid? And then I've got this one. And so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to bend it over. And then I want to tightly wrap this around. And I'm just going to give it about a couple of, couple of turns on this thing. Just like that. And you can see, and I, I can come in here and snip this off. But there's some questions around the continuity portion and wh where we should or we shouldn't have continuity. At, at this point, there should be continuity between all three legs. Because we have two sets of wires connected in the center. So here I've got my multimeter. And let me hit function. And now we are ready for continuity test. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this to the center, the center tap and then to the aerial. We have continuity. Center tap and ground. And we have continuity. Now I'm going to go to the aerial on the ground. And we have continuity. 
So we've done that right. So what I want to do now, and I'm not going to do it on the video because it's easy, is I'm going to snip this off and then I'm going to solder it. And then when I'm done, I'm going to have something that looks like that. Okay, we're back at the schematic. We're going to talk a little bit about this. So we have our toroid is tapped in the center, right? We already, we already talked about that. So that is after eight turns, and then we have eight more turns. So if we look at our primary winding, which is here, we have eight turns. If we look at our secondary winding, which includes both sides of the center tap, it's 16. So the way that this works is that we want to get something called our turns ratio. And that's when you take the secondary, right, which is ours is 16, and we divide it by 8, which is the primary, and we get 2. And then so what we have there is a number of 2. And if we square this, we get 4, and that's what gives us our 4 to 1 transformation ratio. Now, there's a lot more stuff that goes into it than that. But that's all you basically need to know, and that's why we do it this way. Now, you could do 10 turns and your math would still work, right? Because it would be 20 over 10 divided as 2. Or you could do 6 turns. We found is 8 turns works the best for us. Anyhow, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.